So this is Doug with my star, and today we're in Unit 7.1. We're looking at Lesson 3. So um, in Lesson 2, the students have used the fidget spinner generator system, which is the fidget spinner with magnets and the coil and LED light. And so what we hope they take with them is they know that the fidget spinner magnets make the light light, um, when the magnets aren't spinning, there's no, there's no noticeable attraction. You wouldn't, you know, know they're even magnets in this situation. Um, without them spinning, there's no light. And when they're spinning, if I hold it further away, there's no light. There seems to be more light when I get close. So those are the things that are coming out of lesson two into lesson three. And so in lesson three, we're thinking, well, maybe there's something special about magnets. So maybe we should investigate more about the characteristics of, of magnets themselves. And then maybe look into, you know, what's going on with this copper coil. In lesson three, the students start by looking at magnet-to-magnet -magnet interactions. So we're going to use uh, these rectangular magnets, which I tend to call domino magnets, but they're just rectangular in nature. Um, and then these little, we call these craft magnets, but they're little cylinders. And um, one thing about these is, is these are red on one side and, and black on the other. And these I've marked with an X on one side and the other side isn't marked. It really doesn't matter which side you mark, you just want some marks so that you remember how you're orienting these things because we're going to look at that. So in the first uncover share cycle, students are going to look at how, the, how magnets feel to them. So if I hold these magnets, so one side is marked with an X and one is not, and I try to push them together, uh, it feels really strange. It's almost like there's a spring between the two pushing them apart. Um, if I move it to the side a little bit, then, that, then I feel them start to pull together. If I put the other sides, it's the, it's the same thing. If I hold this pair of magnets, so both black sides are pointing towards one another, then they really want to snap together. I can really feel them pull quite hard. Likewise, when I hold the X's toward one another, same thing, it really pulls. But if I just turn one around, then they want to push, push apart. So that's one of the things we notice. Distance has a real effect here, like I can kind of feel a force held this far apart, but as I get closer and closer, it gets harder and harder to, to push these together. So they do that with these domino magnets, and then they compare, once they've completed the observations with the domino magnets, they use these craft magnets. These happen to be marked red on one side and black on the other. So when I hold the two red reds toward one another, again, I, I can't push them together. I feel that, that pushing. And on the other side, uh, if the black is facing one another, same thing. If I turn one of them around, then they, they pull toward one another. But not nearly as strong as the other magnets. Now these are smaller, but whatever's going on in this space between the magnets is, I'll just say, less powerful. The forces aren't as strong here. So what students are going to do is try to draw a picture of the space around a magnet, like what is going on? And the things we want them to notice are the sides, the orientation magnet seems to be different. Given you know another magnet as a test object, it wants to pull or push depending on which side it's facing. So they're gonna imagine you know what this space around magnet looks like and put that in their student guide as a model. So one of the things we're going to ask our students is you feel these forces, but they aren't touching. These things aren't touching. It's kind of amazing you can apply such a big force with these things not even touching. So 
it's the field around the magnets that, that is part of that, and that's what students are going to explore. And we call these non-contact forces. And of course, there's also non-contact forces that we experience like with static electricity on balloons and of course with gravity. So we're going to look at the differences and similarities to these things. And non-contact forces is one of our science words. After students have looked at magnet-to-magnet -magnet interactions, now we're going to look at magnets and this time we're going to be focusing on the magnets that are attached to the fidget spinner. Um, how they interact with things that aren't magnets. Uh, so we got a piece of cardboard here. We have a, uh, this is a mason jar lid, so a canning lid. It's not square, but it's about, you know, about the same size, but it's steel. And then we also have a piece of copper foil that's been folded like this. This starts out as a 5x5 five five sheet, and then if you fold the corners into the middle, you can get about a 3.5 by 3.5 inch square, which is the size I cut the cardboard, and similar to the size of the, of the steel. So we're going to So we're going to compare how these magnets interact with, with those three things. So we'll look at one at a time, starting with cardboard. I hold the magnet far, I hold it close, I move it around, I don't, I don't get any interaction with the cardboard, not surprisingly. And you want to make sure you do this on a surface that doesn't have steel or any, anything that's magnetic or attracted to magnets around it, so be careful. Um, if there's metal desk legs or something right here, you're going to get some interesting results. Okay, now looking at the steel mason jar lid, uh, it is attracted to the magnets pretty strongly. So there's a strong force between these. If I hold it far enough away, I don't, I don't notice anything, but as soon as I get close, it's sucked up into the magnets. Um, it's hard to test the sides, but if I turn this fidget spinner over, I also notice it sticks. So unlike the magnets where it pushes one way and pulls the other, these seem to always pull. And of course you can test that using the black magnets that we looked at before. Okay, so finally we're going to look at this copper, copper sheet here. Just like the copper coil in the generator, fidget spinner generator, I don't have any interaction here. There's nothing to indicate that there's anything going on here, um, whether I hold it far or close. So we notice there's no interaction between the magnets and the copper foil. But students are probably going to recall, we hope they recall, that. There was no interaction here, but when we spun the magnets, of course, there was something going on. Uh, I don't really feel a force or anything, but I definitely see the light lighting up. So maybe with spinning magnets, things behave a little bit differently. So we're going to repeat the same experiments we just did with the cardboard and the steel and the copper, but this time we're going to use spinning magnets. Okay, well, to do that, and I'll start with the cardboard, if I hold the fidget spinner like this, I really can't get very close to it without my fingers getting in the way. It, it's, it's kind of hard. I could put it on the edge and do it this way, but what we're going to do is put a handle on this. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can So one handle that works well for the fidget spinner is just put to put a bottle cap glued to one side and now I can hold this close or far really easily. So that's one way. Another handle that we can use for the fidget spinner is this piece. This is used in a subsequent lesson in this unit. You don't need to do this because we have other ways to do it, but if you have access to a 3D printer and you can print out this, the file to print it is in the lesson plan and it works really well as a holder. And the way you do that is you can just take a screwdriver and just be gentle and just pry off this handle. And then with that handle off, it exposes the bearing there. And it, this cylinder on that handle presses in. And so now I can use this as a handle, just like 
just like the other one. So it's easy to get the magnets close to my object. Okay, so now that we have a handle for our fidget spinner, either the 3D printed handle or the bottle cap handle, we can go ahead with our experiment. We're going to just kind of repeat what we did before with the three objects, we're in the cardboard, steel, and then copper, and see what we notice. So with the cardboard, I'm going to spin it and hold it far, hold it close, maybe move it around, get it really close, and I don't notice anything. Not too surprising. Now we want the students to think about what will they see with the, with the steel sheet or the canning lid before without them spinning it just flew up and, and stuck, stuck to that. Now if we spin it, will we see something different? So I'm going to spin the spinner, hold it far, nothing, bring it closer, 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 and not surprisingly it jumps up. And I really, it happened so fast it's hard to see what's going on, but there's definitely a force pulling that up. So they will look at that and record their observations. So now we'll test the copper. There was no interaction when the magnets weren't moving, but we know that with the generator I had to spin the magnets to get light. So we're going to spin the magnets and see what happens. So you spin the magnets, hold it far, hold it far, bring it closer, closer, closer. And before you touch it, all of a sudden that starts moving too. So I'm not, I'm still pretty far from it, but something's going on, right? This is crazy. So without spinning, there's nothing. If I spin the magnets the other way, I wonder if that'll spin the other way or, or what'll happen. So let's try that. And it always, it seems to spin the same way that these are spinning. So there's definitely something interesting about this interaction between copper and spinning magnets.